Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to talk about a very simple but uh, quite nice thermocouple based uh, thermometer. So this is the MAX 6675 uh, circuit which is a very nice circuit because it has a 12-bit ADC which provides us 0.25 degrees Celsius uh, resolution. It can communicate via SPI so you can wire it up with any kind of microcontroller in this demo I'm using an Arduino Nano, as you can see it, but any kind of SPI compatible microcontroller can be used and the code is more or less the same. So the basic circuit is this guy here, which is already in the breadboard, but it's in a very, very simple uh, tiny PCB, as you can see, and there is barely anything on this uh, circuit. So what we have is uh, two big uh, plastic terminals with uh, some screw connections and then there's the microchip and uh, just a filtering capacitor uh, here and we have the five uh, pins for uh, GND, VCC, so this is for the power supply, 5 volt is just fine. And then we have SCK which is the clock, CS which is the chip select and SO, which is the slave output. So we do not communicate towards this thing, we are just reading data from it. So there is no more pins, which should be the input uh, when we are talking about SPI. So how this thing works is that uh, this chip has an internal uh, diode, which acts as a core junction compensation uh, element. I will show you some more pictures and I will show you the internals of, uh, of this before I will show you the source code uh, for this microcontroller. But basically you read that uh, core junction uh, temperature and as you can see the temperature is basically red at this position and that is very close to the actual core junction. So as long as you keep these two things at the same uh, enclosure, uh, the error uh, introduced by the core junction uh, measurement is more or less negligible, at least for this kind of precision that we want to achieve. And uh, then we have a nice cable. And at the end you have some kind of uh, nut uh, which has some threads, so you can put this in some sort of enclosure, a metal enclosure of course, because uh, the metal uh, assumes that you are using this at higher temperatures and actually uh, one of the shortcomings of this thing is that you cannot use this below zero degrees so this circuit is made in a way that it only allows you to use it between zero and 1023.75 degrees celsius but then if you want to use a thermocouple a k-type thermocouple for measuring uh, negative temperatures then you should use another circuit, which I will introduce in another video, which is this, and this is the MAX31855, and this is also using SPI, but uh, it uses a bit different uh, data structure, but I will show this in another video, but there are options for uh, negative temperatures with K-type thermocouple as well. And uh, yeah, I just show you the original packaging of this, or the original uh, product. You just have to open it. So when you when you order this kind of thing, uh, this is uh, the circuit part. So you can see the big uh, terminals, and then uh, some wires uh, for connecting to the microcontroller, and then this is the uh, thermocouple wire itself. So this end is the yeah. Technically, this is called the hot junction when we are talking about the thermocouple. So this is where you measure the temperature and then uh, the wire is nicely prepared with these uh, terminals and everything. So this looks quite decent. But uh, once again, I have to emphasize that this is only good when you are measuring uh, temperatures above zero degrees Celsius. So not for negative temperatures. But if you try to make some kind of oven or measure your room temperature and so on and so on, uh, this is perfect. So let's talk about the circuit a bit more. We have the Arduino Nano and then we have a 16 by 2 uh, LCD. So this will just show us some data 
this is using I squared C communication. So it's very simple. And then that's all. And I will just use this other thermometer as a sort of a reference. This is also a K-type thermocouple based uh, thermometer. And uh, that's, that's all. So I will uh, plug this in into some power source, uh, which is just a mobile charger and we will see what happens. So hopefully you can see the display and uh, now you see basically the readings and uh, what we see on this display is the following. So the R is the rho value and then the T is the temperature in a given moment and then the AVG is the average. So what I do in the code, I, I will show you the coding of course, uh, but I do what what I do in the coding is that I measure 10 readings and then I average that and that uh, is printed on the bottom of the display. So I just prepared some lukewarm water here and I will measure that as some kind of demonstration. So let me just plug this in and then this should of course increase. And uh, together with that, just to validate the uh, values, I will use another thermometer just to see what happens for this guy here. I think this is more or less visible. So this thing is showing 36.7 right now and this is pretty much showing the same. So yeah, it works. Of course, we can try this at uh, higher temperatures and, and see what is happening uh, with them. But uh, I just wanted to get some validation that uh, it is measuring more or less the same uh, as like a more reliable device. But uh, yeah, this was just uh, a very simple uh, demonstration about this circuit because I found this uh, thermocouple and uh, thermometer as a kit. So it comes uh, with the chip and comes with the cables and with this and I found it very uh, easy to work with. So then I thought that I should demonstrate this to you and also show the coding and uh, the connections. So therefore you can use it in your projects. And uh, this is a very simple uh, circuit and very reliable, I would say. So it's uh, easy to uh, work with. But uh, this was uh, technically the whole uh, demonstration of uh, this part. And now I will jump to my computer. I will show some details about uh, the chip just to see how the SPI works and how the internals uh, look like inside the chip. And then I will jump to the Arduino code and uh, show you uh, what's up there. So let's move to my computer and uh, let's uh, talk about the details. So before jumping to the code, I would like to show some details about the internals and the SPI communication. So on the left hand side, you see the internal uh, circuitry of the chip. And uh, what you can see, this is the input here. So the positive and the negative side of the uh, thermocouple. So one will be the chromal wire and the other will be the alumal uh, wire. And uh, this chip has uh, circuit or wire detection. So if you pull the uh, T minus to ground, you can detect if there is an open uh, wire or not. So that's sort of a fault uh, detection. And then there are some amplifiers inside and here you can see the cold junction compensation diode. So the diode detects the temperature and then uh, based on the values, uh, you will get some uh, value passed to the AD converter, which is just some voltage, and that is converted into some digital values, and it is going to the uh, microcontroller via the SO pin. And then uh, that is uh, basically the inside in very, very simplified uh, way. Uh, on the right hand side, you can see the things related to the SPI. So this is the very simple uh, block diagram uh, for it. So the chip select pin has to go low here, and then you start to clock out the 
uh, data using the SCK uh, pin. So you provide the clock uh, from the microcontroller to this uh, chip and then uh, the clock pulses will step out uh, the bits uh, from the 16-bit uh, number. So you step out 16 bits and then communication is uh, closed down when uh, chip select uh, goes high. Here you can see uh, a more complicated uh, timing diagram, but uh, in fact we will not uh, pay too much attention to this because the Arduino's internal SPI uh, library uh, takes care uh, of this uh, protocol. So all we have to do manually, sort of, that we bring down the chip select pin and uh, start the transaction. And then basically this part, which I put in between parentheses, uh, goes automatically. And then we just pull back the chip select uh, to high and uh, we receive our 16-bit number. And uh, the structure of the 16-bit number is the following. Uh, on the 15th uh, bit here, uh, we have a dummy uh, value that is always zero. So that's a lucky thing because we don't have to uh, care about this. So this thing here. And then uh, from 14 to 3, we start from MSB uh, and uh, we finish with the LSB. So this is the uh, direction of the, of the number. Uh, you have to be careful about this because uh, sometimes you can have LSB first, but here uh, it's not the way. So this is the data. So as you can see, uh, this is our 12-bit uh, uh, reading. And then uh, in the last uh, three uh, numbers or bits, we have some other uh, details. So as you can see, the names of the columns, the state, the device ID and the thermocouple input. But these are also sort of uh, neglected. But the problem comes here that uh, you have a bunch of numbers in more precise. Uh, you have 16 numbers and then uh, this one is uh, not too useful. This is useful and also this has to be neglected. Uh, because if you read the wall number, the wall 16 bits, you will get some funny readings for the temperature. So I will show it in the Arduino code that you have to shift out basically this portion of the numbers and then uh, you will make your data and uh, reuse it into a technically 13-bit number but since uh, this bit is always zero it will not uh, modify our number. So this is how it works. And uh, I just want to go back uh, to the principles of the thermo thermocouple a little bit. So you just get a bit better overview what is this cold junction and hot junction that I was uh, talking about. So when you have a thermocouple you have a hot junction, so HJ, let's call it like this, where you measure the temperature. So technically this is the probe. And then uh, you have a wire coming out and let's say this is the positive side and this is some sort of nickel chromium al uh, alloy and this is the chromal uh, wire. It's usually 90% nickel and 10% uh, uh, chromium. And then you have the negative side, which is the aluminum part. And this is nickel, aluminum, and uh, some other things, usually some manganese and silicon, but uh, let's call it uh, nickel and aluminum alloy. And then this wire, this is the metal thing, which uh, goes uh, towards the chip. Uh, will uh, go into some sort of terminal, which is just the connection to your uh, circuit board. And there, uh, these two wires actually end. So here you have the cold junction. So this part is the cold uh, junction, because what you do here is from this point where you have the, the connection to the circuit board, you change the material of the wire. So here, let's make this wobbly wire here. These are both uh, copper wires. So then uh, here, there will be another kind of uh, uh, voltage uh, showing up because here you have the voltage, so let's call it UTC, you have the voltage for the thermocouple, but here you have the voltage for the cold uh, junction. So this is the cold junction. And then here you read some kind of other uh, voltage and let's call this UM like the measuring device or the uh, microcontroller or chip 
uh, whatever you have. In this case, this is this thing. Uh, so the voltage which is read by our uh, microchip. So the thing is that in the core junction we have another thermocouple uh, formed and uh, this has to be kept as a reference. So in fact, when we try to uh, find out our real uh, value here, we have to do some correction based on the reference uh, uh, temperature and that is done by this core junction compensation diode. So in, uh, in a very ideal case, this part which I just put in a square or rectangle, they have to be at the exact same temperature because here inside this uh, circuit you read the temperature of the chip and then this is where you connect the wires of the thermocouple to your circuit board. And then you end up with a formula that the measured uh, voltage should be equal with the thermocouple voltage minus uh, the core junction voltage. So this is what you get. And once you have this uh, operation done and you get the UM, then this is converted into some kind of uh, yeah temperature value or uh, some degree. So what people usually do is they put these two things very close to each other. As you can see on the circuit board, this distance is like one centimeter, so that's quite okay. But uh, sometimes everything is put in a, in a block, which can be kept at the same temperature. So then uh, it's quite certain that uh, we have the same uh, temperatures. So it's a large metal block made of copper, for example, and then you put everything at the same spot. But uh, sometimes it's not possible to uh, put these two things together, uh, close to each other. So what uh, people usually do, or the manufacturers uh, usually do, is that there is a wire coming out from the microchip. Uh, and that is, for example, an NTC uh, thermistor or a platinum uh, thermometer. And that measures the temperature of the uh, core junction and then does the conversion and the correction based on that. So in nutshell, you just have to uh, know your uh, core junction temperature properly and uh, precisely and then you can make the uh, correction and then that corrected uh, voltage value is passed to the AD converter as you can see it here as well and uh, that corrected value will now show up on your microcontroller. So let's just uh, jump to the code and uh, see what is happening there. So let's look at the source code and uh, let's see what is what. So I'm using this liquid crystal I2C uh, library. And then here you can see uh, which kind of ports you should use uh, for the I2C. So B7 and B6 for an STM32 and A4, A5 for an Arduino. And then uh, we just create this uh, instance. You can see I'm using the 16 by 2 uh, screen with this address. Uh, this usually works without any kind of modifications and uh, it just works. So then we have to include the library for the SPI communication because this is how we uh, contact our microchip which is reading the thermocouple. So then we have a bunch of uh, variables here. So the TC row is the row number for the temperature. This uh, AVG counter is a counter for the uh, average uh, temperature readings. So I want to count until 10 and then I sum up 10 readings and then I divide it by 10. So I get the average of uh, 10 readings as you will see it later in the code. And then I have the TC uh, Celsius. So this is the thermocouples value in uh, Celsius degrees. And then I have the AVG TC Celsius, which is the average temperature in Celsius degrees. And then uh, this is just a temporary uh, storage when I calculate the average. And uh, I also define the chip select pin to be the pin number 10. Then we jump to the setup. And of course we have to make the chip select pin as, as an output. So we define it as an output and just to start with this, we pull it low. 
Then we start the SPI communication and we start the serial communication as well, because uh, as you will see it later, I will send uh, some data through the serial port, because of course you can send these uh, readings to your computer if, if you want. And this is just a standard uh, process what I usually do with this kind of display. So we have to initialize it and then initialize the backlight as well. We put the cursor in the first row and the first column, so the upper left corner of the display. And then I just print something. In this case, this is the number or the specific uh, chip that I'm using for this thermocouple. And then I move to the next line, so I modify the second uh, number in this argument. And then I just write thermocouple. And I wait two seconds and I clear the wall display. So then I will be ready to print some stationary uh, parts on the screen by using the print LCD uh, function. And the loop is uh, quite simple. So I just read the thermocouple with some uh, SPI communication. I wait 200 milliseconds and then I refresh the LCD and only those parts which are modified. So coming back to the setup file, I have this print LCD uh, function. So that is this guy here. So here I jump to the very first uh, block on the display and then I uh, print this R uh, there. So this will just indicate for me that I'm printing the row value there. And then uh, I stay in the same line, so still the first line, but I jump a few blocks away and I have the T, so that will be the uh, temperature. And then I jump to the next line, so as you can see this will be the second line in the in the display and I just print ABG this will, will indicate me for me that this is the average temperature reading in this line and uh, then since this is so close uh, let's check what the refresh LCD does so what it does is that first it jumps after uh, the let's say R uh, text and then first deletes the content up to four characters. So this is just four uh, spaces. One, two, three, four. So by this, you just print white spaces there. So you erase everything which was there. Because for example, if you print a four digit number, but after that you print a three digit number, then uh, the last digit of the four digit number will stay on the screen if you don't clean it and therefore uh, this will lead to some confusion. So it's always good to clean the area with the uh, highest amount of digits. So if you have a uh, six digit number, then you have to uh, print six spaces there. And then you can write your value as I do it with the TC row uh, variable. And uh, these two are basically just the same. So first I uh, jump to the point where I want to start printing my text. First I print spaces and then I jump back to the beginning of the line. So I put the cursor back to the starting point and then I print the value that I actually want to print. So, and then I jump to the next line. So the second line, again, delete the corresponding parts, jump back to the beginning and print the value that I actually want to see. So then we finally can read the thermocouple so this is already shown when I showed you the internals and the SPI communication. So I just put this here as a reminder. And then we are using this uh, standard uh, like beginning of the SPI communication. So MSB uh, coming in first and then we are using the SPI mode one. And this is just the speed of it. It's a standard uh, way of using the SPI. So if you remember, uh, the chip select pin has to go low so then after the SCK signal will start to step out the readings. And then uh, just to be on the safe side, I applied one microseconds of delay. Uh, according to the data sheet, you have to wait at least 100 nanoseconds. Uh, this is pretty much more than that, so it will be fine. And just to uh, pull out the uh, data from the uh, sensor, we are just uh, transferring this dummy data and then 
what is coming out will be the TC raw, which is the very raw data with all the 16 bits. And then uh, we finish the communication by pulling back uh, the chip select uh, to high and close down the transaction. And now comes the funny part. So here uh, there is an example how the data looks like. So this is the 15th uh, bit, the, this uh, zero number, which is highlighted. And then I put the one here just to show you that this will be the MSB. And then we go until the LSB, uh, which is the other one. And then these uh, three numbers are the bit uh, number 0, 1 and 2. And uh, as you can see here, I shift the wall 16 bit number. So the wall number here uh, to the right by three steps. So what happens is that the last three numbers in this uh, number, which is the bit 0, 1, 2, is being shifted out. So what will be the result here is this number. So this is the bit number 15, which is the dummy bit. And then we start with this. This is the 14, 13, and so on and so on. And uh, then this is the bit number 4, which is now our LSB. And since this is 0, it will not change the meaning of the number. So in fact, now we have the, the final uh, result and this can be printed as the raw data on the serial so you will see this when I show you the serial port and we can calculate the value in the Celsius uh, degrees uh, system so that is just a multiplication by a quarter so 0 0.25 and uh, we print that as well and here I made a very simple uh, strategy to calculate the average, maybe not the nicest uh, code ever, but uh, it works. So we have this AVG counter, which will, in this case, uh, we will count from 0 to 9. So 10, uh, 10 uh, different values will be there. So what happens here is that whenever we are below 10, then we increase the value inside this uh, variable by just adding the most recent uh, reading uh, from the uh, microchip. And then uh, I just print this out just to see how it counts. And then after this is done, uh, we also have to increase the number of the counter. So when it was zero and we entered this uh, branch of the if else, then uh, it will be one. And then uh, it goes until reaches this uh, condition. And when this condition is not fulfilled anymore, so we don't enter this part, we enter this part. And then uh, we just do a division by 10 because we know that we added uh, or summed uh, 10 values. Uh, so we here uh, divide by 10 and then we get the average of 10 readings. And we have to make this zero again, because otherwise we will just keep adding uh, the most recent values to, to this variable that I highlighted. And then uh, the value will be still divided by 10. So in fact, uh, we will get higher and higher number uh, or larger and larger uh, number. Uh, but that will be not true. So what I just wanted to uh, do here is to show you the average for the most recent two seconds or three seconds roughly. And then of course if you start to increase the temperature of the thermocouple then uh, you will see the change. And also the counter has to go back to zero so you will count again from zero and then you go one, two, three, four, five and so on and you will recalculate the most recent average. So if I open the terminal then nothing happens and then we reset the stuff and uh, we see the readings. So I will stop this after a while and just show you what is happening here. So let's start from here because this was a zero value here. So you see the row value is printed and then this is multiplied by 0 0.25 and then this was the result of that multiplication and then we increase the number of the counter and then uh, we got the next result, we calculated the Celsius degrees and then the counter was 2 and so on and so on and we went until it was 9. So now we have 10 values stored and summed up in uh, uh, this temp 
ABG TC Celsius variable. And uh, yeah, we do our last reading. And of course we do the average as well. And then here after the average, as you can see it here, everything is set back to zero. And then we start the counting uh, over. And basically that's all. So as you can see, this is a very simple and quite short code. If I could uh, make it a bit more elegant, maybe it would be less than 100 lines. So technically this was the wall uh, demonstration. As you could see, the code is quite simple. It doesn't do anything fancy. We just communicate with the chip uh, via SPI. We read uh, the value, we shift the value, and then calculate some sort of average just to smooth out the uh, fluctuation of the temperature readings. So it works quite well. And uh, you can use this up to 1000 degrees Celsius. I haven't tested it, so I'm not sure how resistant uh, the covering is. It seems to be made of some kind of stainless steel, so it might withstand uh, the high temperatures, at least to a certain degree. Uh, you can use this for some ovens or some furnaces where you are below 1000 degrees and uh, the precision or the resolution is 0 0.25 degrees Celsius, so it's a uh, quite okay uh, value. So I hope that uh, you found this demonstration useful and I hope that you learned something. Please always check the description because I always put the uh, drawing and the source code there. So before asking for it or commenting that I missed something, please check the website uh, that I provide in the description because usually I put extra details there. So I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.